Hello guys, welcome to this session on functional genomics. Earlier to functional genomics, uh, we have already discussed comparative genomics in which we try to compare the genomes of uh, different species and we're trying to figure out that uh, what are the common features among those genomes and we also try to evaluate what are the evolutionary relationships in, in, uh, between those genomes. And later on, we discuss structural genomics. And in structural genomics, we try to find out structure of each and every protein which is coded by the genes present in the genome. And today we are going to discuss about the functional genomics. So the function in functional genomics, we try to uh, determine the function of each and every gene present in the genome. So usually we can do it at the gene level, we can do it at the RNA level, and also we can do it at the protein level. Okay, so let's begin. So what is functional genomics? The definition of functional genomics is, it is a study of genes, their resulting proteins, and the role played by those proteins in the bi body's biochemical process. The functional genomics also involve understanding the genetic control mechanism. So before uh, beginning the functional genomics aspect, first of all, we have the whole genome sequence of a particular species. Then with the help of bioinformatics tools or uh, other techniques, we figure out that uh, which is the coding region and which is the non-coding region. So we try to find out where, where are genes and which is the intergenic region. And then we try to establish that how this gene and intergenic region of the genome contribute to different biological processes. So in functional genomics, we study genes as well as intergenic region. And with the help of this, we try to determine how individual component of biological system work together to produce a particular phenotype because you know that uh, many of the phenotypic characteristics they are controlled by uh, many genes in the higher eukaryotic organism so you have to understand that which are those different genes controlling the particular phenotype as well as you should also understand the regulatory mechanism the regulatory uh, genes or the regulatory regions which are controlling the expression of those genes and overall this process is highly dynamic because you know uh, when these genes are expressed they are not uh, continuously expressed uh, throughout the lifetime there are some genes they may be expressed at the developmental stages then there are some genes they might be their uh, expression may be upregulated or downregulated in a particular disease condition so that's why it is called as a dynamic expression because the gene expression got changed according to the different stages of the uh, life cycle or maybe during the disease state. So from literature or uh, through the empirical data, we already know the functions of many genes. And in the functional genomics, we try to use that current knowledge of the gene function in order to develop the model, which will link in between the genotype and phenotype. So in order to establishment uh, of that link in between the genotype and phenotype, we can use various functional genomics approaches, depending on what we are actually focusing on. So as I have already mentioned that you can uh, do it at the DNA level, RNA level, protein level, or even at the metabolite level to establish the link in between the genotype and the phenotype. So the first approach is at DNA level, and it is a genomics and epigenomics approach. The study of DNA sequence and associated heritable biochemical modifications. Our second approach may be at the RNA level, where we study the RNA, particularly the whole transcriptome present in the cell. Here we study the RNA molecule present in the sample. Third approach is at the protein level, that is particularly of the proteomics, to study the proteins present in the sample. And the fourth approach is metabolite level, where the study of uh, metabolites present in the sample is carried out. So together this transcriptomics, proteomics, metabolomics describe the transcript, protein, 
and metabolite of the biological system. And the integration of these data is expected to provide a complete model of biological system under the study. Goals of the functional genomics. So as in the case of uh, structural genomics and comparative genomics, we focuses on the static static aspects of the genome that is only the DNA sequence or the structure of the proteins. But in the functional genomics, we focus on the dynamic aspects such as uh, gene transcription, translation, then regulation of gene expression, as well as protein-protein uh, interaction also. So the goal of functional genomics is to understand the function of the genes or the proteins coded by those genes. Also to study the biochemical nature of the product, gene product, then its cellular location, also uh, its physiological role in the cell or in the organism's body. Also, uh, the goal of the functional genomics is to study spatial and temporal genetic variation. So, as you know, that uh, over the time, maybe different genes express or the uh, expression pattern change such as in organism development or even there is a difference in gene expression according to the body region so that's why we try to figure out what are the spatial and temporal genetic variations uh, in an organism techniques used in functional genomics so we can do it at dna level rna level or the protein level so at dna level we can determine the function of any gene by simply deleting that gene from the genome and then to observe the phenotypic effect of that deletion. So that is called as a knockout technique. We simply knock out the gene and then we see what is the difference in the phenotype or what kind of phenotype has been disappeared so that we can simply correlate in between the gene and the phenotype. But in higher organisms, Many of the characters are controlled by multiple genes called as polygenic uh, inheritance. So in case of polygenic inheritance, if you delete a single gene, then there will not be sufficient effect on the phenotype. So you have to delete the genes in a pairwise manner. So the systematic pairwise deletion of the genes or inhibition of the gene expression can be used to identify genes with related function even if they are not physically interacting with each other that is called as genetic interaction mapping next technique is dna protein interaction so the proteins which are formed by the translation process they play a very, very important role in regulating gene expression so to understand how these proteins control the gene expression it is very uh, necessary to identify DNA sequences that they interact with. So techniques have been developed through which you can identify the DNA regions with which these regulatory proteins are interacting with. Uh, techniques like DNA's footprinting or chromatin immunoprecipitation sequencing are some of the examples of DNA protein interaction identification methodologies. Another way to identify the regulatory regions in the DNA is by DNA accessibility assay. So these assays have been developed to identify regions of the genome that are accessible. So these regions of uh, open chromatin are candidate regulatory regions. And uh, examples of the assay are ATAC sequencing or DNA sequencing or FAIR sequencing, etc. Next set of technique can be used at the RNA level. The first one is the microarray. In microarray, we measure the amount of mRNA present in the sample that corresponds to the given gene or a probe DNA sequence. So in DNA microarray, you have two different samples and uh, you want to study the differential gene expression in two different conditions. So suppose you have one cancerous cell line sample and other one is a normal cell line sample. Then you can simply isolate the mRNAs from those two samples and uh, test, it, test it on the DNA microarray where you can easily identify that uh, which genes are expressed in 
cancerous cell sample and which are expressed in the normal cell sample. Then next technique that can be used at RNA level, it is called as SAGE. So SAGE stands for Serial Analysis of uh, Gene Expression. Now it is an alternative method of uh, analysis based on RNA sequencing rather than hybridization technique. So both of these methods, DNA microarray and SAGE, we are going to discuss in uh, next session. Then the third method is RNA sequencing. So actually RNA sequencing is most recent and advanced method and it has uh, taken over the microarray as well as SAGE technology in the recent year. So in RNA sequencing, it is done by next generation sequencing. You simply isolate the RNA from the cell and you determine their sequence by next generation sequencing. So in the functional genomics, we usually, usually rely on uh, these high throughput methods like microarray, SAGE or RNA sequencing. Apart from the other methods like uh, northern blotting, where you can only target the single RNA molecule. As the need of functional genomics is that, uh, we have to analyze the function of many genes, multiple genes at the same time. And that's why those traditional methods of blotting or hybridization, they are not as much useful. And that's why here in the functional genomics, we use high throughput methods like microarray, SAGE and RNA sequencing. Then next set of techniques can be used at the protein level. Now these techniques you must have learned in your uh, proteomics part. The first one is yeast to hybrid system. So in order to understand the function of uh, any protein, if you know that with which other proteins this particular protein is interacting with, then it will be easy to decipher its function. Because you know that many of the proteins, they play a critical role in the cell signaling pathway. So if you identify that with which other protein the particular signal molecule is interacting, it will be easy for us to ident uh, to uh, decipher its function. So yeast to hybrid system is uh, one of the method where we can find out the protein-protein interaction. So in Y2H method, we use one bait proteins against many potential uh, interacting proteins, which are called as prey to identify physical protein-protein interaction. And this system is based on the transcription factor, originally GAL4, whose separate DNA binding and transcription activation domain are both required in order for protein to cause transcription of the reporter gene. So here by this method, we can identify the proteins which is interacting with all other proteins and thereby we can uh, find out the function of all those proteins. Next technique is affinity purification and mass spectroscopy. Again, this method is also dependent on the protein-protein interaction. So it is able to identify proteins that interact with one another, but in complexes. So complexes of proteins are allowed to form around one single bait protein. Then that bait protein we can identify with the help of uh, antibody against it or we can identify it with the help of recombinant tag and through which we can extract that bait protein or we can purify that bait protein along with the complex. So in the complex there will be our bait protein and different other proteins interacting with that bait protein. So once you extract or purify the bait protein, along with that, uh, the interacting proteins will also be purified. Later on, these proteins are separated. They are then digested into short polypeptide chains or peptide fragments. And uh, mass spectroscopy is used to identify the proteins based on mass to charge ratio of those fragments. So MS technique you must have learned in the proteomics like uh, we can use MALDI-TOF or ESIMS or uh, tandem MS we can use for identification of these proteins. Last set of technique is loss of function technique. In that the first one is mutagenesis. So as I have mentioned earlier that in order to understand the gene function we can simply delete the gene from the genome that is knockout 
and we can then see what are the effect of that deleted gene on the phenotype in this way we can establish a correlation in between the gene and that uh, phenotype but this can be done by the other way also that is mutagenesis so the technique called as insertional mutagenesis by which we can mutate the particular gene sequence and see what kind of phenotypic changes have occurred due to uh, that disruptive mutation in the particular gene so that is the loss of function technique the next one is rna i technique that is rna interference now this method can be used to transiently silence or knock down gene expression using approximately 20 base pair double stranded rna and that is typically delivered in the cell by the process of transfection and this rna it will interact with the mrna which is expressed by the gene and this double stranded rna is going to be digested by uh, one complex so even if the gene is expressed its mrna is not functional it never got uh, translated into the protein and thereby with the help of this rna i technique you can uh, actually see what are the difference or what are the changes in the phenotype occur after inhibition of expression of that mrna then the last technique in the loss of function is crispr screen so here we can make use of crispr cas9 technique that is actually used to delete the genes in a multiplex manner in the cell line and after deletion we can uh, see what are the phenotypic changes occur in that particular cell line and easily correlate in between the function and the gene there are some consortium projects which are focusing on the functional genomics one of them is the encode project encode stands for encyclopedia of dna elements so this project is an in-depth analysis of human genome whose goal is to identify all functional elements of the genomic dna in coding as well as in the non-coding regions also and the second one is the genotype tissue expression project so this GTEX project, it is a human genetic project aimed at understanding the role of genetic variation in shaping the variation in the transcriptome across the tissue. So as you all know that uh, in the human population, there is a huge genetic variation is there. And due to this genetic variation, there is a variation in the mRNA, in the proteins also is present. So what this project does, this project has collected tissue samples, different tissue samples, more than 50 different tissue samples from more than uh, 700 different individuals. And this has resulted into the collection of more than 11,000 sa samples. So this project helps us in understanding that how the gene is expressed in the particular tissue and it is not expressed in somewhere else, like in why the genes uh, some particular genes express in the brain, not express in the liver, why they're expressed in the kidney and uh, not express in the gonads. So in order to understand this tissue specific expression, this project works in that direction, the genotype tissue expression project. So in this way, we have studied the uh, introduction to functional genomics, goals of the functional genomics and uh, various methodologies that are used in the functional genomics. So that's all for now. Thank you.